unshakable faith. Every day, every shift in the ER is the day of the unknown. Some days are quiet and other days are complete professional chaos. Lives are saved and lives are lost. Death visits frequently. What is it really like to walk in the shoes of an ER physician for a day in the emergency room? And how does a physician really deal with life and death decisions on a daily basis? For the past 16 years, Dr. Tim Myers has walked through the emergency room doors not knowing what his day will hold. Will he face the death of a stranger's loved one who can't be saved? Or will it be a day that he saves many lives? And how does his unshakable faith help him make his decisions and deal with the ups and downs of saving lives? This is Today's Life, a story of unshakable faith. Dr. Myers, it is so good to see you again. It's been a long time. I used to work in the ER here with you. It has been. It's, uh, it just doesn't seem like it's been that long. I, five time flies. years. Yeah. It's a crazy place. Um, I don't miss it at all. Really? No, I don't. Hey, listen, tell me about <laughs> what it's like for you as a doctor in the ER and walk me through one of your chaotic days. I know what it's like for a nurse. You know, we're juggling around patients and making sure they're going to all their tests and taking care of them. But I really want to know, what is it like for a doctor? Because you have so many more decisions than, you know, nurses have to make. Tell me what it's like. Just walk me through one day and in, in a crazy day in the ER. Well, I suppose that is a, a big part of why I like emergency medicine and working in an emergency department is that no day is the same and that it is crazy. And you sort of have to like that and enjoy that to do this uh, over a long period of time. And so I like that, that fact that every day uh, is different and, and is even, as you said, chaotic. Uh, so I like the fact that uh, <clears throat> there's so much diversity in the emergency department there that is, sometimes definitely. you're focused on medical problems and kind of solving the mystery of why is a patient having a symptom. And sometimes that's a one month old and trying to figure out why they have a fever and in the room right next door and maybe an 80 year old and you're trying to figure out why they're having chest pain and if it's an emergent cause of chest pain and then if it is what we need to do to treat it and to make them better and then there's a whole other group of patients where it's not so much of a mystery as to what's going on but it's something that just needs to be fixed and it's procedural and you get to use your hands and so that might be a laceration to sew up uh, or it may be uh, <clears throat> somebody that's dislocated a shoulder and we need to put them to sleep and put their shoulder back into the joint. And so I love that aspect about it, that um, every <clears throat> day and every situation, really every patient is different, um, but it can be crazy. Uh, crazy and it can be chaotic too. And so sometimes <clears throat> I'll see a patient and I know what I'm wanting to do uh, on them, but by the time I get back to my desk, I may have been asked uh, by a nurse for pain medicines for another patient, and the secretary will let me know that I've got a call coming in from another doctor, and then there'll be a paramedic on the phone that's right. wanting orders <clears throat> uh, as they're coming in with a, a patient. And uh, then you sort of have to sit and gather yourself and say, what was it that I was coming back to uh, the computer here to do or to order on this patient? And so you have to uh, get used to that uh, and that pace and that it is uh, somewhat uh, frantic. So, what? but uh, I've, I've really, I, I've enjoyed that over time. And, um, and I think that part of what makes that also enjoyable is that in the emergency department, it's a little bit unique or different than other jobs in some respects because you're just very much a part of a team. And so have to work even together. though I do have my individual responsibilities and you have your individual responsibilities as a nurse, 
we just really have to come together to each do our thing and to do it well so that in the end the, the cumulative thing is done right. And so there's respiratory therapists and there's paramedics bringing patients in and the clerks have an important job making phone calls. And so everybody, it's sort of chaotic for each individual group, but you, you sort of do your thing. So. Well, I have to ask you about your lapel. Um, you have a cross on your lapel. Tell me about it. And, and tell me about the hospital. You know, I loved working here because it is a faith-based ministry. And but I want I want to uh, hear about the story of you. You've worn that cross for years. I have worn it for years. I would say that it's probably nine or ten years now um, that I've worn it. And a patient gave it to me. <clears throat> I had actually sewn up his hand, and he came back to get the uh, sutures out um, a week or so later. And he had made it. He had hand carved these, and he, he had done different carvings like that. And <clears throat> so he wanted me to have it. And I thought, you know, because we had talked about our faith that day, while he was there, or just while we were while we were sewing him up, you always have some downtime. So it's interesting all the different conversations that you get into. So uh, I felt like if you know that it was neat that that came out of that. And so he brought it up, and I thought. If, if I wear it and people ask about it, you know, it may it opens uh, the door. generate uh, fu future right. discussions. So, and it is nice, to, you're right, to work in a place where you can um, have those discussions and, um, and feel free to do so. Um, that, uh, that we really do, as a hospital, try to emphasize that this is a ministry. It's a ministry to patients. Um, and that's how we really refer to these different things and the different aspects that we do, that it is the ministry of, of this. And so working at an institution that is faith-based really is uh, very freeing. Well, you know, the pressures always used to get to me. I'd go home and take it with me. And I always wondered, do you take anything home with you? Do the pressures, how do you handle it? Um, <clears throat> well, I think that, uh, that I try to deal with the pressures of you, the, the pressures that come through work like I do with sort of everything else in life. And I think it's really um, with an emphasis in just trusting in the Lord first and trusting in His sovereignty <clears throat> and that He's in control. And that kind of gives you ultimate peace and ultimate trust. Um, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. And, you know, that's sometimes easier said than done, but as you get used to that over time, I mean, it, it really helps me resist that temptation to lean on my own understanding, figure things out on my own, but to really have a bigger long-term eternal perspective and that he's in control uh, and that helps a lot. And some of it is just how I'm wired up. I do think it's hel helpful. I think he put me in this field for a reason because I do feel like I, I, I'm able to shut off. I can turn off the switch and when I go home with family, um, be with family and not sometimes my wife even jokes when she asks me about how my day was and I say I'm not sure I remember and there's some truth to that and that's a, that's a blessing. So.